Hey everyone, and welcome to the Talk to the Internet podcast. Uh, today, we are going to be talking with the creator of the SCP Breach, Gary's Mod Mod. Uh, is there going to be a multi-stream? Um, not, not really, no. So we're all going to be watching um, Kryken do a screen share through Discord. Uh, and we're just going to be hanging out with uh, one of the mod's creators, talking about SCP in general. And uh, Bruce and Kraken are on the line. And... Um, yeah, this is this is one of the other things that uh, uh, Kraken in, in particular was really excited to do, is sort of dive into gaming and, and internet culture in this way, talk to the people who make games, uh, get their stories, all the weird little like human tales that happen behind games. Uh, so this is one of the things we're going to be doing. Um, yeah, squad stream makes a lot. Well, we're all going to be seeing the same thing, so I don't know that a squad stream makes a lot of sense. Uh, but yeah, so if you're listening on audio, that's why some of the audio quality might be different. That's why the vibe might be different. And there's going to be a fourth person uh, talking as we assault them with questions about video games. So that's uh, that's the idea for this episode of Talk to the Internet. Um, and also, chat's going to be involved too. So we'll all be looking at our respective chats and butt in there with questions you guys might have. So if, uh, if you hear something that makes you curious or something like that, I'll be like... I'll have a little notepad of questions up that I'm going to be uh, addressing and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this, this goes well. And I am excited. I'm excited about it. Well, right now, uh, whoops. Oh, can't wait. Why do I have being achievement points? What? Whatever, who cares? Um, but yeah, just waiting on Kraken to sort of take off, and I guess we'll just be chilling out until then. Um, I hit my record a little early. I am, uh, personally, yeah, Bing Bong Chivos, man. Uh, I love achievement points so much. Uh, do I play D&D? I have in the past. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily like a role-playing lifer, uh, because I know some people are super into role-playing, tabletop role-playing. I like it, but, um... I, I don't know that I seek it out or spend a lot of time doing it. Uh, I For some reason, it's it's bizarrely more comforting to me to play role-playing games with a computer. Sweet, sweet PC. <laughs> That's a really good emote, Red Moth. Oh yeah, Microsoft Rewards. I think I have like $2 worth of Microsoft Rewards I gotta cash out on. Or maybe get them to donate money to a charity or something. Well, yeah, I guess in the meantime, I'm going to talk to the internet. How's it going, chat? Um, I, right before the podcast started, I was like, should I eat something? And then I opened my fridge and I stared at snacks and I was like, I don't need anything yet. Uh, yeah, I th I, they either got rid of Microsoft Rewards or they were about to. Also, behold, I have a discount jug of fish oil. So my heart is going to be very healthy and my burps are going to be very fishy. This is all I need. This is all I need to sustain me. A couple of fish oil pills. So let's knock these back. How? Wait a minute. Oh, boy. They even say fishy. Holy shit. I don't know why. I guess that's what happens when you buy the cheapest possible jug of fish oil pills that you can. Um, you know, yes, this is SCP multiplayer. So uh, Kraken set up a server. We're all going to be flying through it. Oh, uh, Amador. No, the podcast is starting. Um, it's starting right now. Uh, so we are, uh, that's why they're cheap ones, yeah. Uh, yeah, we are about to, about to get going. Kraken set up a, a server that has people playing in it. Will, he is spectating and he'll just do fly-throughs watching people play. Um, we are just going to be hanging out. Kraken is screen sharing his fly-through through Discord, and that's what Bruce and I are going to be showing. And then we'll all just be chatting with, uh, one of the mod creators, uh, to, um... Sorry, I was just making sure I was muted. To, uh, to kind of explore the game and talk with the creators about it. Are those the kinds of fish oils that explode if you bite them? Isn't that all pills? Oh, uh, you can get points from Xbox Game Pass if you complete their quests. Mm. This is the first one I'm actually going to get to watch live. Ooh, welcome, Thunderbeard. Uh, yeah, we usually do it at an earlier time. Um, but Kraken's a night owl. He's a little, he's a little vampire boy. Uh, and I don't know why, but I've been waking up at like 9 a.m. a lot. Uh, I used to be that way. I would, I would stay up until like 4 a.m. and then sleep until 11. And, uh, 
for some reason since since leaving Rooster Teeth, my my sleep schedule has been largely the same. I think that's part of like part of getting older is you just don't sleep as much. <clears throat> yeah, still soft. I think that's it. Sleep four hours a night up at up at five a.m. and it's getting older. I guess so. I still go to sleep at. Yeah, I guess just getting tired at night is a, is a is an old person thing. What uh, what it used to ha- the way it used to work is, and I talked about this cycle a little bit, is that I'd work all day, I'd come home, I'd be so burned out from working, I'd be like, "Hello, everybody." We're getting started. And welcome to a very special show today. Uh, if you're listening. Welcome. This is uh, essentially one of the first audio experiences that we're looking to put on with this channel. Um, This is being produced with, of course, the help of Bruce and Lawrence, if you're familiar with our usual programming on Wednesdays of chatting to the internet. Um, Today, we're doing something a little bit different. And let me transition these scenes. Hello, everyone. Um, We are filming now a live uh, podcast in a way. Um, that we are also inviting guests on to talk about what they do and what they care about in the internet. So uh, today's episode is essentially episode one, um, and I took the initiative of inviting uh, a big creator within the sphere of SCP and the SCP Foundation. Uh, The Vulgan, um, as some of you might know, is a YouTube audio uh, content creator that does readings of different SCP entries and a bunch of other things. So... Um, Yeah, without further ado, we're going to hop in in just a minute and talk to these guys as well as Bruce and Lawrence um, and have a little little powwow. We're going to talk about everything from SCP to uh, just creative IP authorship on the internet, big brain topics like that to, you know, what's the scariest SCP. So everything everything under the sun we can really handle. Um, In the meantime, what you're looking at back here uh, is actually... Uh oh. We lost him. Yeah, was Craig supposed to just cut off like that? Oh no! We lost his audio. Oh! I see his gameplay. Yeah, he. I think he like tabbed out or something. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. Episode one off to a flying start. Volgan, Volgan, can you can't hear him, right? No, I can't hear. Oh. Him. Okay, make sure. Without further ado, <laughs> I'm going to uh, unmute, and we're going to go say hi to our guests. Okay. Hello, gang. Hey. hey! Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh shit. Okay, hold on. I gotta do the. I gotta do the uh, Dr. Miller intro. Okay. Okay, do it. Uh, here we go. Mm. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Kraken. Thank you for joining. Me. Today, we will be examining the SCP Foundation. That's all I got. <laughs> That's good. That was amazing. Ten, ten okay. out of ten. Not bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, can't compare to yours, uh, Mr. Volgan. But uh, thank you so much for for joining us. We're very excited to to have you on this this weird little little pseudo podcast live stream experiment. I'm happy to be here. Very, very yeah. nervous, but I'm happy. Oh, don't be nervous. We are the least intimidating people on the internet. Isn't that right? That's, that's exactly right. Oh, I've been judging this entire time. Oh, never mind. Lawrence is the worst. Yeah, yeah Lawrence is the worst. <laughs> um, as some of you may not realize, uh, Mr. Volgan isn't actually American. Um, his voice, he, he puts on Dr. Miller, it's all facade. He's been lying to you this whole time. Yep. I how am do you, from Northern Ireland. Yep. How, do you, how do you explain yourself from being not from where you sound? <laughs> um, well, the, re- the reason that I started uh, doing it in an American accent was instead of just... Because I... Like... My normal voice just sounds really boring to me, so I love voice acting and I love doing different accents. So I just thought, why not make it American? As sixty percent of my audience is American, mm-hmm. just kind of made sense. Yeah, well, it's it's yeah. very convincing. I know you said that voice acting is a passion of yours. Is that kind of what initially inspired you to start this channel uh, of oh, yeah. doing readings of of SCP, or kind of what was the uh, the origin of it? Um, well, I used to do. Uh, readings of like funny copy pastas because if, if you actually look at my channel you know the navy seal copy pasta oh god i love it so much I did, yeah yeah i did i did the yeah, fuck I did, did you just say to me at the, yeah. i gotta oh man i gotta check that out right now. little bitch <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um back back in the day i was about probably 23 whenever i started uh doing voice acting and stuff 
Um, but somebody linked to me a video. I think it's called The Sculpture on YouTube. It's about 10 years mm. old. Um, but it was super out of the blue and it was kind of creepy. Uh, so whenever I investigated more into it, I found the SCP wiki. And at that stage, I was reading out copy pastas anyway. So I thought mm -hmm. creepy pasta isn't really that different. And it was just a catalog of free scripts that I could read. Yeah. Like, and I was kind of an edgy dude back then. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, why not? That's great. Um, How, so do you that's remember what year that was? Uh, that was 2012, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it was 2012. That's it, great. The, the first video I created was called Behind the Scenes. Hold on. I think it was. I'll check. I think we've all been doing internet stuff for around the same time. I mean, I think I started in 2008, but by the time I think I hit yeah. my stride, it was definitely 2010 or 2011. So. Yeah, it was your Fallout uh, New Vegas videos I remember watching first. Oh, that's sweet. I, yeah. Because you, you didn't actually speak in them originally. Sure, you didn't. It was just text yes. at the bottom of the screen. Because yeah. I was too young and I, I wasn't <laughs> gifted like you to have a, a wonderful voice acting voice. So I was like, <laughs> I got to I gotta hide my age and, and immaturity. Well, and I just think you have a fantastic voice. Oh, my God. Let's just let's keep this going. Let's just compliment each other. <laughs> the, the show. Uh, Aaron, I got a question for you. So in terms of voice acting, was it something that you just sort of did because you knew you either had to or wanted to or did you know you had like a penchant for actually voice acting um i mean I, it was mainly accents i was always the guy doing silly voices at work like i worked in a shop for about five years and i was always doing silly voices but like it was always something i'd wanted wanted to pursue but mm -hmm. living in northern ireland you don't get too many uh chances at that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. i was really happy whenever <laughs> whenever the youtube thing started <laughs> So you think that uh, the internet has allowed you to sort of not only explore your your talent, your skill, but also share it with other people, basically? Oh, for, for sure. Yeah. W w without the internet, I would probably be in a dead-end job right now. Yeah, I think a lot of us feel the same way, oh, yeah. to be honest. I, mean, I, I would put you guys in the spot, but I know we owe a lot to the internet creating these weird new jobs that didn't exist, like, five years ago, let alone 10, you know? So yeah, I'm very um, grateful every day, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. And I think that's kind of the whole, I mean, not to force a segue, but the SCP foundation to me, uh, represents like a really fascinating kind of naturally occurring talent of the internet to just like combine creative energies from different individuals that are constantly like, like, like a big, you know, group thought that they're all submitting to one database. And then it becomes a like you know its own living breathing thing and i think that that's what I, I personally love about scp is it represents so much what makes the internet great um and so i'm excited mm -hmm. that we can kind of start this conversation uh and i yeah, mean it no sounds problem. like it's it's worked out uh really well for you is there i don't know do you have any thoughts on kind of how scp has formed over the years has it changed a whole lot since its origins in like you know 2012 or um, yeah, I, I think it's changed quite a bit. I mean, like on the on the website itself, the scpwiki.net, um, it, it has changed a lot in terms of writing style. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you user, users are aware, but SCP-173 and um, anything under SCP-999 are referred to as Series 1 mm. SCPs. Um, they're, they're kind of associated with a, a thing that does a thing. So, for example, like, uh, what, what's the most famous SCP apart from 173? Uh, 106, Radical Larry, everybody knows him as. Right. He's just a, a creepy old man that teleports, you mm -hmm. know, whereas, whereas over the course of 10 years, it's developed much more in terms of uh, narrative-focused mm -hmm. stories instead of just a creepy thing that does a thing. Yeah. Um, but, it's, but it's been quite a gradual evolution. Yeah, I, that's a good point. I mean, I, I definitely feel that over time, the this is kind of the same problem you'll find with like a lot of sci-fi shows is like the stakes have to keep raising or even animes yeah. like look at like dragon ball right it's like how do how do you have the next villain be somehow more world ending than the previous one and <laughs> i feel like scps have that similar problem but coming from the place where there's not a single creative writer's room right it's just a lot of different individuals yeah and yeah. it ends up being this like you know con like constantly conflicting report of different entities that are gods and um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like the earlier days were just like, what if old man could take you to pocket dimension? <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. So you mentioned the early days, Kraken. Um, maybe we ought to, just for the sake of completeness, give a really quick baseline about what SCP is and how it started. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then also, right. there's a specific question from chat that I thought was interesting. What came first, the SCP game or SCP Creepypasta? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The, the, uh, the Creepypasta came first. Um, I would think so, yeah. The, the, uh, yeah, the, the way it's kind of come about, and I, honestly, probably, Vulcan, you're a better uh, lore keeper of it <laughs> than any of us, so <laughs> feel free to chime in. Um, but just a basic explanation is the SCP Foundation is essentially a creepypasta kind of wiki site that has uh, evolved over the years and has been a giant kind of crowdsourced uh, narrative space where the format is uh, individuals can submit creative writing in the form of kind of a scientifically notated doc you know, document that is analyzing and describing an anomalous uh, figure or object. Um, and then based on how to contain it and how dangerous it is, it's kind of how uh, it is classified and how uh, it is written about and kind of documented on this website. So over time, as more writers have submitted, the uh, library of the foundation has grown and grown and grown and inspired you know, countless uh, other pieces of work such as you know, mods, as we're looking at right now on, on screen, is the Gmod uh, Breach game mode, um, as well as standalone games like Containment Breach, um, uh, Secret Lab, and a few others. So my, my the biggest question for, for me, Aaron, when we're talking about SCP at all, is mm -hmm. who gets to judge <laughs> what makes it what makes it in and what doesn't make it in? Like, who's taking all those submissions? Um, the the SCP wiki is is staffed by a lot of people uh it's a it's a site called wiki dot if 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 you're familiar with it um, okay but there's there's pretty much a like an internet outreach kind of staff but ev everyone that submits an article to the scp foundation or the scp wiki um is an author and they vote so how it works is if you if you were to, <laughs> to register for a wiki dot account join the scp foundation and submit a piece of written work Mm -hmm. uh, you can you submit it and you have if it gets a positive vote it stays but if it gets a minus one vote within a day a countdown timer starts Ooh. until so 24 hours after that it gets deleted oh wow so it is almost Unless like it becomes plus sorry oh no go, go ahead i'm sorry um it gets deleted and, and um but it, it, it's it's difficult to, to say who really judges it. There's a lot of debate on that. Is it is it the the audience or the authors? Mm -hmm. But I, I would say it's probably the staff of SCP Wiki and the authors. How, yeah. how many people are we talking, Aaron? Um, I'm not actually sure how many, but uh, it's not it's nowhere in the terms of YouTube subscriber ranges. <laughs> like it's, it's a few <laughs> few hundred people. I, I would yeah. say. it's amazing. That that's really cool. It's the real council. What is the name of the council at the top of the... The uh, O5 council. Yeah. The O5, yeah. So the O5 council is really just a couple hundred people that plus a, an article or down an article. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like it is sort of a, uh, a natural selection as applied to communal writing and mythos generation where like if, yeah. a, if a given story meets the acceptance of a group of people, then it's allowed to stay and perpetuate. But if not, then it gets dunked, which is kind of kind of fascinating really uh, yeah i mean i mean i would i would say you're right about the the kind of natural selection kind of thing but within within the 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 scp wiki there is there's this saying that is there is no canon and mm -hmm. what that means is originally whenever the the scp wiki existed there was kind of a canon like an mcu style canon mm -hmm. but the problem with that is because you have so many authors contributing one author could leave and delete their articles so then there's a massive gap and hole mm. in the canon and that actually happened about eight years ago hmm. really so from then on yeah there was a, a very prolific author um actually left and deleted all of his articles and because so many articles referenced his work they just had to rethink the entire thing go okay well there can't be a canon anymore huh. so um, I'll actually link it to you, uh, but there's there's um, canon collections um, within mm. within the SCP. Um, I'm actually going to trying to find it here. Yeah, but those like like are authors that have banded together and said like, okay, we will support. I'll support yours if you support mine, sort of thing. 
Um, I, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, it's it's a good way for authors to collaborate on mm -hmm. specific universes without infringing on other people's universes. <laughs> it's 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 very complicated sometimes. But um, if that that's the link there for the canon hub, there's all sorts of things like there's there, there's a canon called uh, the Broken Masquerade mm -hmm. canon. And the Broken Masquerade means it's a universe where the SCP Foundation ha is public knowledge and everyone knows about it. Uh -huh. And they just explore what happens and, you know, what would happen if the public knew. Because yeah. typically the SCP Foundation is a, a secret, secret government secret. organization, spooky. You know? Yeah, yeah. I have an interesting That's question that may be, it's basically going to be impossible to answer. So I'm going to leave that, leave, leave, put that right out there. But <laughs> um, what would you guess? are people's motivations in submitting because i imagine if you read enough if you read enough entries they probably get grouped into categories i imagine there are some people who want to write a myth that's more powerful than anyone else's so like the dragon ball z escalation you talked yes. about kraken <laughs> i imagine there are some people who i don't know just want to write the creepiest thing possible or they want to subvert their real life experiences into scp and get catharsis by writing about them given that you've ingested and had spent so much time in that community what would you say is is like if you were to categorize people's motivations and their creative creative impulses what do you what would you say uh you know how would you characterize that well i mean you're pretty buying on in, in, in your assessment at the start there i mean the 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 whenever i was talking about series one scps the that gets kind of tossed around as a vague insult <laughs> um it's 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 a powerful entity that's really you know like pretty much what you said at the start, um, but there are there are categories. There's there's people that want to write, you know, a really powerful entity, and then there's people that want to write um, a really in depth story, start a canon, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, but I would say it it comes down to two main categories: people who want to write a story and people who want to create a creepy creature. Mm -hmm. I would say, a, cre a, a creepy creature or entity. Yeah. yeah. I would I would say that's the two main motivations. Um, I want to talk back on uh, kind of how you're you originally were interested in this kind of as a way of flexing your your voice acting talents, right? So yeah, you you had sure. a kind of a, a wealth of of creative writing at your disposal. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen that the SCP kind of sub forum has become that same thing for aspiring creative writers? That it it's given them a format and a community in which they can kind of hone their craft to. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's a number of um, there's a number of authors on the SCP wiki that have certainly came into the room. Um, I mean, I obviously can't speak for any of them because I'm not a, I'm not an author myself. But mm -hmm. there are a number of kind of celebrity authors within the community for sure. Um, DJ Cactus is probably one of the most prominent mm. um, authors. He's he's wrote a lot, <laughs> a lot of of SCPs. I'll, I'll actually get his author page up there if you want. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, I, I didn't even thought about like one source and and how you would kind of curate your own canon within like having multiple yeah. entries that get approved. Um, yeah, it's 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 weird. Like he has DJ Cactus has over over two hundred articles on the SCP. Wow! Like if wow. You, I mean, all you have to do is open open the page that I just linked and just scroll down really fast, and that's all the articles the guy's written. Um. That's actually a really good question. Uh, how many, how many SCPs are there? Does, does anybody know what's the actual total? Mm -hmm. um, so at at this point, uh, so there's we're up we're on series six at the minute. So series six is SCP five thousand to SCP five thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Oh, so but they're not all filled in yet. Because uh, yeah. if you if you actually I'll link that again. So I'm linking everything in. Oh, that's great. Uh, but. That's that's series six, but if you quickly scroll down, you'll see a lot of access denied next to yeah. the number. That means the the number hasn't been filled yet. Mm. Got it. It's, Got it's it. still yet to be submitted. Huh. Interesting. Um, another good question from Foxtrot in my chat was asking, uh, in terms of all the articles on the website, is this all just public domain? Can can people take this stuff and do whatever they want with it, or how does that work? Okay, so it's a Creative Commons by Sharealike 3.0 license. Uh, so anyone can take, uh, like, say, say for example, say SCP 5000. Okay, mm -hmm. so I could create an adaptation of that. The only stipulations are number one, 
my work that is based on it needs to be released under Creative Commons Share Like 3.0 as well. Mm -hmm. So nobody can own an exclusive kind of branch of it. Nobody can own, ex own exclusive rights mm -hmm. to the SCP. Yep. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you are aware of it, but um, about six six months ago, I think. Yeah, the lawsuit. Was, uh, yes, the, in, in, in Russia, there was a person uh, who actually tried, or no, he didn't try, he successfully trademarked the SCP logo in the Eurasian Customs Union, mm -hmm. uh, which there's a lawsuit currently going on at the minute to stop that from happening because it just sets a really bad precedent yeah. for the rest. But um, yeah, the, the, he's pretty much universally hated by the entire community <laughs> because he's trying to own what was built by thousands of people. Is the next uh, was it? I think you put together a Kickstarter to help combat that. Is that is that, is that correct? Uh, yes, or? the 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 SCP staff put okay put that together. Uh, luckily, uh, Markiplier chimed in a few mm -hmm. weeks ago and raised almost two hundred thousand dollars oh, for the legal fund. So that's amazing. That's What's, what is what is this? Yeah, can can you link it so that we can sure yeah, shout I'll, it out? I'll just go yeah, we can it. circulate that on our own too. It's yeah, it's basically the it's a fund to help make counter <laughs> hire counter lawyers to, to put this guy uh to bed legally um not threatening him Just... not, yeah. that's, oh, that's... no 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 yeah, don't, please don't, don't come do at me that. that will do nobody <laughs> nobody any fear yeah, yeah 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 um but yeah oh this this uh actually brought up another good point that i wanted to talk talk about uh what are your thoughts on kind of inspired by ips of the scp kind of formula such as you know cabin in the woods i'd say is a pretty fair hmm like kind of offshoot um, as well as like all of these games that exist that are SCP. Mo they're all pretty free to play for the most yeah. part, but I think others have found ways to monetize, you know, because you have to sure. pay people to make them right. So I I love it whenever I see inspiration um, mm -hmm. and other, as long as it's not an outright copy, I absolutely love it. I mean, Control, yeah. I completed it in less than a day. I was obsessed with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I unless it's a complete, you know, a complete. I, I don't want to say the word rip off or anything, but if they're right. if they're directly referencing the SCP Foundation, I, I just think from a Creative Commons standpoint, you can't really do that. But inspiration should anyone should be able to use inspiration. I think. Yeah, I mean the the whole secret underground facility isn't necessarily mm -hmm. a new idea, oh, but no, definitely not yeah. the way uh, it's been executed. I think is is certainly mm -hmm. unique. So, um, yeah, I yeah think, it's. I think it's, control is the best example of how really, of how it's in it's it's very inspired, but not mm -hmm. nothing's copied, really. It's it's also a, a tough thing, actually, and if you think about it, because I think SCP itself is by nature referential, and uh, you know, it, 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 it as you said, like they evolve based on the times and. Uh, sorry, I'm just mm -hmm. looking at my screen, and all the SCPs have bound together, and it's just I a know, I'm watching <laughs> crazy <laughs> matchup of different characters. Um, but you know, it's it's they're all inspired in their own way, and so um, if SCP itself is referential and kind of not, you know, its own IP, then how can you have an inspira inspiration be itself too? You know, like I, it's it's got this weird, uh, you know, kind of chicken and egg scenario i don't know if, if that makes sense but yeah yeah i i know what you mean yeah it, it, i mean there, there's there's a, a topic of a lot of debate um the you know the 173 uh the concept of 173 mm. that if you observe it you can't it, it can't move unless you're observing it so that yeah. probably sounds quite familiar to doctor who fans out there <laughs> yeah uh, to the to the weeping angels there's a lot of debate on that on which one came first sort of thing yeah i think i think it's pretty much settled at this point that the weeping angels came first so <laughs> well there you go from from i think i've voice. just split the chat in oh. half by saying that <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I i actually remember arguing this too at some point and i argued the other way around until someone like brought up a like an actual date and then i was yeah. like oh okay i can't really argue that <laughs> um so yeah it, it's yeah like scp itself was kind of built on references and I, again, rip off. I don't, I don't think is a fair word, but like, yeah, yeah. you know, inspirations like, from other media and sources, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's like X Files. That, I don't, I don't know if you guys ever watched X Files, but that's oh, yeah. exactly what this was. Uh, week uh, to week, it was just it was a new monster, and then 
Um, sometimes they would get contained. Other times they would let them go free, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, but it, it works really well in this sense because, again, so many people from the internet contribute to it. Uh, mm -hmm. It opens it up to uh, thousands of people's imagination versus just a writer's <laughs> Yeah. And so what's your thought on the downside of that same kind of, like, I consider that a positive thing, uh, but on the flip side, it also means that the voice of the foundation, the voice of the kind of each of these, these characters and creatures aren't consistent, you know, often. Yeah. Um, do you think that hurts the overall SCP IP or, you know, is that what makes it great? Um, I No, I, I don't think it hurts it. Really, because I, I think the beauty of it really is, it depends really what you're interested in, um, and on what canon you actually follow. I mean, there are certain things that remain consistent. For example, you know, the, the SCP Foundation is an organization. There are D class, um, there are scientists. There are always anomalies being contained, all that kind of stuff. But um, other than that, there's there's a vast uh, selection of canons that you can that you can read, all catered to a different. You know, like a different kind of taste, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. Um, but I, I definitely don't think that hurts it. I think it strengthens it because you have more diverse stories to tell. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, as far as your own channel goes, uh, can you share a little bit about the kind of history of how you decided to... I mean, you, you mentioned you're beginning to narrate around, uh, you know, honing your skills as a voice actor, but mm -hmm. I think it definitely developed from there in terms of the kind of, uh, like if you watch your earlier videos versus your later videos, it goes just from purely voice acting to a bit more kind of tone setting, almost canon setting within your own, like, you know, corner. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. You want to speak a little bit to that and, and um, how that can be? Sure. Well, so uh, at the start, I only created uh, readings of tales mm. because I, because I really wanted to showcase the voice acting element of it. So it was um, at the start, I would create kind of realistic kind of re re recordings, um, sometimes to my own detriment because I tried to make them sound so realistic that they just sounded like you know, kind of shitty quality <laughs> <laughs> recordings, which kind of defeated the point of buying a good microphone in the first place. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I originally started off doing Tales, which in 2012 is what most people responded to on mm -hmm. my channel. Um, back then, I didn't make money. Um, off my videos at all so i did it for about four years just because i loved it mm. uh, i i eventually kind of started taking a wee bit of a break but whenever i came back it was about two years ago um i started doing it full time i switched from tales to creating the documents so mm. by document i mean if you like if you just search um scp wiki.net forward slash scp you know 1048 okay i would create as you know as an in canon kind of you know that's why i created the dr miller character yeah. because i don't know i i, I kind of like like immersing people in, in a region and making it yeah. feel like it's taking place in a in a, in a universe yeah um, there, there's a lot there's a lot of scp content creators that do it differently i just prefer a, an in universe take on it mm -hmm. it's it's more fun for me it's you know it's my style yeah uh, scott joseph is asking about uh i guess scott had heard there'd be might be movies or television based on scp uh was that yep. ever a thing or is that going to be a thing yes that that is a thing um there's a there's a movie coming out soon uh based on scp 096 shy hmm. guy which is a very common yeah uh, uh, fan favorite uh, yeah. it's director clay able i'll actually lo uh, link you some of his work here actually uh, now, how he, does that he, work? He's a visual effects artist. Oh, um, he actually created a GoFundMe. Yeah. Uh, because because it's Creative Commons, um, he can't he can't release the movie um, and claim any exclusivity to it. But what he can do is upload it onto YouTube. Huh. Um, oh. Like you know, like with, with with my videos and countless other creators. Uh, let's see. Let's just get. To... I'm just trying to find you the the trailer for the video if you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, here that'd it is. Here it is. Yeah, got it. There we go. Let's see. All right. Is there a way I can play? Yeah. All right. I'm going to alt tap. I'm going to go play it on mine. So. Oh, you got it? You got it, Kraken? 
yeah, I'm gonna. Well, it's gonna be hard for you to see it because I'm gonna. You're not gonna be able to see the Gmod, but yeah, I'm just playing it muted. Over, over yeah, here. I'll do the same. Okay. Uh, I have a pretty existential question to bring up. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. What, uh, what would you say is the appeal of of stories like this? And and like clearly there is an appeal. It's something that's been part of human nature for as long as we had the ability to communicate. You know, telling stories, trying to explain the world around us. Um, it's interesting because I feel like there's a bit of a schism between using uh, superstition to explain observed phenomena. This is like even a step beyond that. It's inventing phenomena that aren't even observed to just be theater of the mind kind of stuff. So do you think that this is like, a, do you think this is the future of how humans invent and share myth? Um, and I don't know, what are your general observations since you're so immersed in it about the nature of the way that people both create and then consume these stories? Wow. Yeah, that's a heavy one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Right, that that that's that, that was too galaxy brain. Uh, I think. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm, I'm only joking. Um, I, I I think you're right though. Like I think the appeal of it it was always the kind of secrecy of it because th this is the thing from the very start that was always kind of a commonly asked question, mostly by younger uh, readers, and that is if you Google is the SCP Foundation the autocomplete will be is it real. <laughs> Yeah, so, and it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what have I been? What have I been spending money on? <laughs> Why are we having this conversation, dude? <laughs> but, but I think, but I think you make a really good point there because I think people just like to invent things that are mysterious. A, a lot of, a lot of what the SCP Foundation is is mystery. Um, for for example, like a, a very common aesthetic that has kind of dropped as the years have went, but. Um, it's like the redacted mm. kind of side of, mm -hmm. of all the articles, you know, blacked out text, you know, a, a mystery that we'll never know. Like, I, I, I think that was what certainly what drew me into it. Um, maybe the chat could could chime uh, in with yeah. what drew them to it, but that's you're, what you're, totally, you're totally right. That's what Blair Witch was mm -hmm. back in. Oh, yeah. Ah, because uh, Blair Witch, like the Internet was sort of just coming up at that point. So there wasn't really anybody to spoil it. So when Blair Witch came out, it was the same deal. They were saying, uh, yeah, this is this could be real. And at the beginning of the movie, it says this is real footage. And at the end, it says this is fake. So <laughs> yeah, gotcha. um, yeah, so it's like and when you watch the movie, uh, there are a bunch of articles around that film that, that was saying like, you know, like, yeah, they people went to the woods and filmed this and like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it could be real. It's a movie, but it could be real type thing. And it's like yeah. they're, they were really kind of having fun with you, which is which is what I feel this. Yeah, because I remember yeah. from the I think whenever it was in the film festivals originally, they advertised the Blair Witch by saying that the cast had went missing in the woods or something. That's right. That was, that's right. Yeah, that was that was that was uh, very very similar to the. Yeah, the like of, oh, I can trust it. It was in it was in a movie. Like it, it was real. It said at the beginning, based on a true story, so it must be based. On a story. <laughs> um, oh, I, that actually leapfrogs into another question I had, which you touched on briefly. Uh, mm -hmm. There's like a sh to me at least. There's a shocking, like majority almost. I don't know about say majority, but a large portion of the demographic that loves SCP that is young, like that are 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 children or at least kind of like teenage age. Uh, yeah. If you look, I mean, just to see proof of this, Gary's mod has a, th a thriving uh, SCP community, as you can tell on screen, mm -hmm. as well as Roblox. Uh, has an insanely <sighs> large uh, SCP role. Oh playing, God, that's sigh. Um, which is shocking to me. So what a narrative I, I want to hear sigh. your thoughts firsthand, uh, as you, I think, tend to, on one hand, make SCP a lot more digestible to someone that uh, doesn't want to, you know, be reading wiki articles all day, but at the same time, do it in kind of mature format. So, you know, yeah. do you know from YouTube statistics what you know your demographic is, Dude, and yeah, what do you have to say? I, I, I think. <laughs> Uh, because of COPPA, they're definitely not below uh, the age of 13. <laughs> no, of course, of course, yes. Uh, no one watching this is actually below 13. It is, is proven. Um, but, but yeah, there's. The, it, it's funny you should bring that up because even from its inception, pretty much, the SCP Wiki, to join the community, there is a, a 15 and above age limit on it. Mm -hmm. And it's likewise with my Discord as well. Uh, because I think ever since I started creating videos, I realized that there was there was 
a very large portion of younger viewers and and readers and i think i mean it, it, it's funny because the scp wiki itself is quite adult themed and it always confused me why it attracted so much in terms of younger readers it's mm -hmm. it's it's bizarre but I, again whenever i was a teenager i used to read all sorts of edgy shit so yeah i guess i can't really never judge either way yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's like like playing 18 rated games whenever whenever you were 10 or something you know? yeah it, it also cool. might be the kind of mixture of you know by having it sound more official and scientific it it makes it seem okay like you know it's it's more mm -hmm. It's more so legit. acceptable to read. Yeah, it's more legit, yeah, first off, which yeah. makes it scarier. But also, it means, like, oh, it's not, you know, just, like, trash that I'm reading. Like, it's actually, it's scientific. Sure. It feels, it, there's more meat on its bones. And I think to some kids that might, like, make it seem, or, or, or it's, like, more forbidden. And, you know, like, kids always mm -hmm. want to see the most forbidden thing they can, right? So maybe mm -hmm. the fact that they're reading a redacted or don't scroll past this point, uh, Mean, means that it's that much more authentic and interesting to them yeah yeah I think, I think that's a really good point like a lot of articles start with that kind of thing you know like uh don't don't scroll past this point you know a message from the o5 council this yeah. this content has been deemed inappropriate or you know that kind of stuff top secret or whatever it is i like no Craig, and something you said really resonated the idea that Part, part of SCP as it's... Oh, there's our boy! Oh. Um, uh, part of SCP's idea is that, is that modern people, with all of, their, all of their science and all of their understanding of the world, still can't figure this whole thing out. Like, they've, they've organized it, and human beings have done their best, but there are still inexplicable things. I feel like there's something that's even more magnetic about that as, as life goes on and science progresses and we understand more of the world... And it's that, like, what is it? Born too late to explore the world, too early to explore the galaxy kind of thing? Yeah. As you're kind of sandwiched in the middle, and there's all these wonders happening, and you can pull up YouTube and see what life is like in any corner of the planet instantly. So the idea that you can merge that reality with the absolutely unexplained is, is pretty romantic, I think, and pretty alluring. That yeah. as much as the world seems quantified and small, there's still a little, a little alien man with a tiny little butt um, <laughs> huddling in a in a garage somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Actually, on that point, can we talk about the original design? That this little peanut that started it all. You know, because he really he was the original and kind of what like started the the wiki and the foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, to my knowledge, um, and his entry is like it's so it's insane. It it, it his butt is literally covered <laughs> in blood. <laughs> runs around snapping people's necks and he looks ridiculous like yep. like a little off like yeah definitely alien but not enough that it's terrifying like i don't know he's he's such a strange design yeah have you seen the the sculptures that that was actually based off by the way oh yeah. no uh, it's based one. off something i thought somebody just like made a lot of paper mache and then uh, no <laughs> went actually, to their garage if, if you go to i'll link it again uh the the official kind of entry mm -hmm. you can read at the bottom that it was it was photographed um, by is uh, it was a Japanese artist called Azumi Kido. Mm. Or no, sorry, that, that that was the sculptor. Sorry, I apologize. It was Kazuke Yamamoto, I think, was the photographer. But Azumi Kido has released um, oh. tons of these sculptures. They all have quite sizable dicks um, as well. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a little <laughs> yeah. a little wiener bulge. That's the original, that's the original sculpture that's wow. there. Uh, from that page, or and then they just design um, Mr. Peanut after that. <laughs> um, no, that, no, that's that, that was actually in an art exhibition that that photo's from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is yeah. from, this is in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so, oh, and then they just okay, cool. That's like, that's yeah. wild. I had no idea. Oh man, that's that adds more layers to the sort of derivative nature of it all. That you know, a story begets a story mm -hmm. begets a story, and then everyone puts their own little that's spin on it. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, the, the only there's a few exceptions um, on the SCP wiki, but that photo is not covered by Creative Commons. Oh, uh, Azumi Kato has has actually gave them the SCP wiki permission to keep the photo up oh. only if it's not released under Creative Commons. Interesting. So yeah, he, it, owns, he owns the 
the, the design. That's why I don't know if you're familiar with um, SCP Unity. Yes, it's the it's the Unity remake. Um, yeah. They were going through a bit of a design phase to redesign One Seven Three. Yeah. Um, to make it Creative Commons compliant. Mm. Um, which I'm not sure what the status on that is. Um, yeah, but I, they did succeed in doing it. I know a few other SCP groups or you know developers mm -hmm. that were in a similar situation because, you know, there's a huge demand for games like these, but when you can't monetize any bit of it, it makes it very hard to keep developing it, right? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's sure. it's a really, I mean, that's where kind of Patreon and other crowdsourcing uh, or crowdfunding kind of elements can come in to help alleviate that. But for any actual large scale game, and the reason there hasn't been a big SCP game is just because you can't, as per Creative Commons, really pull it off, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the license restrictions are pretty much the reason. Like a, a lot of people would like a, a series like a you know like a like a live action series and it's just not really feasible because you would have to crowdfund the entire thing like no company is going to sink money into a series that can be legally mm -hmm. pirated <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fine that's pretty much it I, um, oh go ahead oh uh historia gaming was asking for my chat um i guess i don't know how much you can speak to this but uh the different SCPs that are international. So like um, SCPs that come from Russia or from you know Ukraine or from France mm -hmm. versus the US. Do you notice any differences? What, what are the differences there? Uh, the, the international ones, I haven't actually had a lot of experience with. I do know that um, SCP-RU, uh, which is the Russian branch, um, it was the first one to, to become like an international branch because before that it was just SCPWiki.net it was based in the United States. That was it. But now, I mean, there's SCP Russia, Korea, China, France, uh, Spain, Japan. Oh, wow. Apparently, it's huge in Japan. Hmm, I, I that makes sense. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, there's there's mangas that are released in bookstores and like about SCP. Oh, cool. Really? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I got to get Not sure more of those. the legalities around that myself. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, but there's also a lot of bootleg stuff in Japan yeah, in general. Sure. Dojin culture is pretty, sure. it's it's right. Like they're, the copyright, I'm not a, I'm by no means a lawyer or anything like that, but copyright law in Japan seems pretty lax. You can, you can get away with near identical copies if you just change one letter of something. I guess so. Yeah. Maybe don't don't take our word on that, guys. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Again, not a lawyer. Japan this is, lawyer. Yeah. This is... uh, yeah. But thank you. I am a master on all things Japanese. Thank yeah. you. For... Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> um. Cool. Uh, did you have a, a question? Lawrence? Oh yeah, uh, this this is another kind of general one, but I'm curious because I have a pretty strong memory of it. Do you remember the manner in which you first learned about SCP and what your reaction was? Because for me, it was staring at Peanut Boy. Um, that picture, that's the first thing I ever saw from SCP. I think it was posted on like 4chan, and it was just like it was just like that picture with uh, like in all caps, so spooky, you guys, like next to it. And mm -hmm. when I first saw that, I was like, and then there was you know a whole thread that I read about it. And I, it took me a while because I just didn't get it. Like, I didn't understand how this stupid photo was supposed to be creepy at all. <laughs> and then I read the entry and I was like, uh, 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 and it still took a bit of, a, oh no, Peanut, no. Wow. Um, yeah. It still took a bit to wrap my head around the idea that it was a communally uh, run, communally maintained website. Uh, and that, you know, it just, it just took me a bit uh, to really grasp the, the notion because it was, as far as I'm concerned, the first instance I've ever run into like that. Aside from like other wikis about, you know, Metal Gear, where 800 people all bicker about whether or not Snake has a, you know, bigger right testicle than a left one. Um, so I'm curious for you guys, like, when did you first encounter SCP and, and what was your reaction to it? And how long did it take for you to really understand fully what it is? Yeah, it's a good he's, question. He's, um, he's going to take that one first. <laughs> uh, I got to think about mine. I don't actually remember. I, it definitely would have been, I think, the peanut originally. And then yeah. that linked to a whole bunch of these. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is the whole thing? And there definitely was a few moments of, is this real? Like, I think that, that's a huge <laughs> original feel mm -hmm. uh, for, for a young child uh, reading this sort of stuff. Um, and then, oh, actually, you know what? It was the stairs game. It was the first SCP game. It was the one where you're walking in those stairs and then a thing jumps out at you at some point. Yes. Very minimal, but uh, it, it definitely 
once I found out that it was part of a much larger lore, that's really what I think spurred me on to, to research the rest of it. Is that uh, SCP-087-B? Is that what you're referring to? Oh, yeah, yeah you just linked I, to it. Or yeah, Vulcan did, I think it. It was a game where there's an endlessly looping staircase, which is an SCP, basically, you know, based on an SCP entry. And then the further you go down, weird stuff starts to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, you probably know better than I. I, I don't, I didn't play it long enough to know if there was an end state or if, you know, how all the different options of stuff that got weird. Um, but yeah. Well, yes, yeah, I mean, with, if you, if you look at the, the wiki um, article, uh, mm -hmm. The whole thing, it's meant to be kind of ambiguous as to what yeah. is really down there. Right. Again, this this comes back to Lawrence's point where it's the mystery that draws mm -hmm. people in. Because yeah. I, mean, I remember, uh, because I did, there was a, whenever I used to do Tales uh, originally in, in, in 2012, if you look at the very bottom, I don't know if, if you are looking at the page, but there's yeah. document one, two, and three. I also adapted... Um, like find footage audio logs, kind of like the Blair Witches. Oh, as cool. Yeah. Uh, but I, that, that, that's what I kind of did. But the, the last one is data expunged. So it was meant to progressively get more kind of unsettling as each document went, went down. But the last one is completely expunged from everything. So you don't really know what's down there, apart from a face staring at you. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's funny. It's funny you, should, you said that thing about the X Files earlier on, uh, Bruce, because that that's actually how I describe to people what the SCP Foundation is. It's like a cheat code for explaining it to them, in, yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah. This is a. It's. I'm, I'm gonna make another terrible analogy. It's a. To me, this is like WWE, um, or WWF, because uh, when you first discover it when you're a kid, ah. you're like holy shit, this could be real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like you think it's real right you think wrestling is totally real and then as you grow up you find out it's fake but Wait, what uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him uh, too many revelations today <laughs> but, a, but a lot of people and actually um i think it's becoming even more even, even cooler to do this which is double down on it <laughs> and go no it's really cool because it's a bunch of creatives making this really cool yeah universe um and also amazing athletes that mm -hmm. uh, are making content for us. And that's that to me is what SC, uh feels like. Cause I know it's all fake. And every time I've sort of like scratched the surface of it over the years, I'm always kind of like, ah, whatever it's fake, ah, whatever it's fake. And then every time I would dive further down into it, I go, oh shit, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> and and then back off. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what's fun about it is that uh, the more you dive into it, the more uh, real it becomes for you. Yeah, hmm. definitely. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, just because you know it's fake, it doesn't doesn't, it doesn't diminish matter. any of the uh, the efforts yeah. of the artists creating them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it goes one layer. Okay. Examples of yours for your first time uh, discovering it. Just back to the original question. Oh yeah, for yeah, I didn't. I don't. I didn't. I didn't really get to hear uh, Volgans. I guess you sort of described it. Well, uh, I mean, I, I actually linked uh, the, the video. Uh, in the in the chat there. Well, oh my bad. Our, our chat. But it was that video actually got got linked to me, um, and this and this was whenever I didn't even know what the term SCP meant. It was just called the sculpture. Um, mm. And whenever I watched it, um, I think it's because the art style is kind of weird as well. It kind of reminded me of like creepy Adult Swim cartoons mm -hmm. in, in a way. That, but anyway, whenever I seen the end of the video. It, it really made me want to look into where this came from because I'd never seen anything like it mm -hmm. before. Uh, and that's that's how I find the list of SCPs. And then I didn't actually read the sculpture first. The, the one that I read first was actually, it was SCP-668, I think it was. It's called The Chef's Knife. Oh, I read that um, one, yeah. Yeah. Um, l looking back on it, it wasn't as good as I thought it was back then. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it's a thing that does a thing. That's what I was saying earlier on. Um, if somebody holds the chef's knife, their aggression is kind of, kind of amped up a little bit. But anyone that they approach is powerless to stop them from doing anything to that person. It's like a, and 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 at the bottom of the the document, there's an incident report that tells tells you how it was found and it was it was like a shopping mall where 
somebody found the knife and massacred an entire shopping mall and to stop mm -hmm. the person from doing it because they can't actually act directly on the person holding it. So they had to use like kind of double blind mm. kind of yeah. new, new things and they had to bomb the, the mall with uh, like fighter jets. To actually <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It, that was the first one I read, and that was that was terrifying. Man, that sculpture really video was amazing. Fox experiments. Yeah, that that yeah. was really well done, especially for back in the day. That's like a really to have the animation style kind of evolve as the video goes on to reflect the horror of what you're seeing. I think is really yeah. effective. Yeah, definitely. And interesting to note that was one of the only videos that I did that got demonetized straight, straight away. Oh, really? Because <laughs> it because it had a picture of a knife in the thumbnail. I think that that would do it. Good old YouTube. You can describe <laughs> as many bloody murders as you want, but uh, I know. You can't put a of a knife. Yep, knives are bad. Um, yeah. Actually, that. Well, it, do we have other other topics on the? Uh, oh, my favorite SCP. Sorry, I just discovered the well, eyeball yarn. ball. Oh, yarn yeah. yarn ball. <laughs> Eric. Is that, is that what he says? <laughs> is it Eric? Is that is that the voice that he says? I forget. Eric. I'm not actually sure who. You know this one? Actually. Oh, okay. That should have that should have been the name of the, the little ear bear, Eric. Yeah, yeah, Eric. <laughs> um. Anyway, sorry. The uh, the origin of um. Oh, so when you're making videos and you're picking what SCPs to uh kind of annotate, um, what is the selection process like for you? And do you, are there type of topics you try to shy away from, or is it just whatever you're in the mood for? Well, I mean, there there are definitely topics that I shy away from, like <clears throat> things that include firearms. Generally, as um, mm -hmm. is, is, is an instant no, uh, overly sexualized things mm -hmm. I don't cover either because that's weird uh, for my for some of the demographic that watches my videos. I just I'm not comfortable doing. But yeah. um, but, but the selection process is is pretty much up to either my patrons or if somebody suggests something kind of interesting in the comments I'll, I'll do that i mean i have i have certain things that are like kind of milestone scps that i want to cover mm -hmm. for example you know like scp 106 is radical larry i've mm -hmm. <laughs> i've had a i've had a an scp channel for about eight years and i still haven't covered that because i'm trying to space them out <laughs> as much as i can yeah uh, uh other things like last year i took up uh, blender modeling just so i can model these mm. things um so there's there's an there's an scp called ananta shasha which is scp 3000 which is a very popular one as well um and i give them kind of more attention than other less rated ones mm. because they're more beloved by fans and that kind of stuff yeah so yeah but like just due to the nature of youtube you have to keep on uploading so i choose kind of shorter ones and then work towards the bigger ones if that makes right. sense you kind of get a feel of what people like whenever you're just involved in the community because mm -hmm. i have a discord as well so yeah uh you also mentioned i mean speaking of the community uh before we started this you you mentioned actually one of these uh assets in this game uh you played a part or uh, this is game mode the mod that we're looking at you played a part in uh creating as well as uh some of the audio lines and i want i i wanted to give a chance to uh to say your bit because i <laughs> yes, didn't let so you say it before there's there's a map the, the, the map that they're on right now there's a few posters in the map Fine. i'm not sure yeah i'm, I'm just looking at here like, but there, there's a few posters that i designed for it was a movie about five or six years ago which didn't end up getting produced um but i created posters for the set and i think he must have linked them somewhere because they just started appearing in these maps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. I mean, that's not super, that's not super uh, detailed or anything. Interesting yeah. to note that logo is actually from Adobe Illustrator. Oh, I, I thought it was like the Dasani water <laughs> like <laughs> backdrop within SCP. I'll, or I'll, I'll, I'll actually link it to you, but uh, okay. SCP logo. Um, anyway, as, as I was saying, the, the, the characters that I voiced in this game, this is the first Containment Breach game, is 049, which is the Plague Doctor. Mm -hmm. um, anytime your character is running and you hear the... <sighs> that, that Which you me. hear a lot in that yeah, game. You do, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, but 049 is, is the one that I'm 
most associated with. Is I, he the I one that say. says like he, he's the I cure? Know, like, oh one. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, I can hear that. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it, there, there's there's kind of a a little bit of an effect added to make mm -hmm. it sound like more metallic or something. Um, but let's see. That, that doctor's Sorry, the go. worst. I'm so tired. of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw you for voicing him, dude. You really brought him to life. I wish he did. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I voiced the, the Plague Doctor 049 at 035, which is the, ma the you know, the mask, the white and black mask. Mm, yeah. Have the one that convinces it? you to let him out. Yeah, uh, I voiced that. I voiced SCP 990 as well, uh, which What's is that? the Dream Man. Okay, but he's not really strictly in the game it's like the loading screen oh okay oh did, yeah did you yeah. ever hear like like an old man voice i've i voiced him oh uh, yeah as well yeah yeah um some scientists uh, i voiced the pa system Ooh. and the mobile task force unit uh, that deals with scp 049 as well gosh hmm. so all the voices aren't asleep <laughs> by now good good job <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> no that's great that's great man yeah those are I, I'm excited to hear that uh, this has been such a, a a great like way for you to explore voice acting in yeah. a really kind of passionate community. Um, has it led to you voice acting in anything else? It's le it's led to me voice acting in a few things, but uh, nothing nothing really amazingly big. Is it's more like people want me to create audio books for them and stuff, mm -hmm. which is brilliant. You know, you know, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would never have that. Opportunity, so I'm mm -hmm. I'm really grateful if anybody wants to hire me. <coughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's yeah. Just, it's great. I'm really grateful for the opportunities that uh, YouTube and the SCP community have mm -hmm. given me for that kind of stuff. That, uh, that the, oh, go ahead. Oh, it's just a uh, number of questions from my chat. Everybody mm -hmm. keeps asking. Volgan, what's your favorite SCP? Hmm. Yeah, I knew we were gonna get to here. I was yeah, trying. Yeah. To, I was. I was buying as much time as we could before getting to. No, the... no, just just for Volgan. We can go around the room later, but uh, they keep asking. Okay, uh, the real answer is SCP 093 the Red Sea object. Oh, that, that's next to my list that I was gonna listen to actually. Okay, I'm not. I'll, I'll not. I'll not spoil. No, 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 no. You have to. You have to. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, the 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 red, the red Sea object is it, it's very it's very interesting because it has a quite a big universe that was created for it. But the, the kind of the footnotes of it is SCP-093 is kind of like a red disc mm. that whenever you hold it in your hand, depending on what uh, personality you have, it glows a certain color. Mm. And when whenever you approach a mirror, you walk inside the mirror into another dimension on the other side. Cool. Huh. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's all sorts of different tests because they do the blue test, the green test, the violet, yellow and red, and all of them have kind of different locations that they port the person to. Based on the uh, personality the of the holder? Yeah. Yeah, like, huh. so if you're a very, very calm person, a very a naturally angry person, it'll be a different, different color. Um, the, the, the joy of that SCP is just reading the test logs mm -hmm. and finding out about that I, I don't want to go too deep into it um if, yeah. if anybody here hasn't done it but well it, if you it's want a fantastic to read. you can check out volgan's channel in which he does go deep into it and you, nice. can, uh, you can you can hear the whole thing in his lovely uh <laughs> dr miller voice um yeah that's hell that sounds yeah, awesome dude. i think the <laughs> hell yeah dude says dr miller <laughs> um i think the uh the ones that have so many different lab entries are some of my favorites because they they feel just like it kind of removes the kind of scientific uh uh what's the word i'm looking for like um aesthetic i guess yeah it, it's like uh when it's been removed like it's it's clean you know it's sterilized mm -hmm. it's like the sterilization you know it's when you're getting to the actual lab reports you you hear the humanity behind either the subjects or the scientists and and what happens um and mm -hmm. i i really like that kind of conflicting account of the kind of science trying to keep it official with the you know subjects reactions being genuine um yeah have you guys it's a, it's a... go ahead go ahead no, no, go ahead. um i was gonna ask what uh bruce and lawrence if you guys have happen to have a favorite one 
I am. Lawrence, you, you go ahead. Yeah, I'm. I'm not as well read on on SCP. So I mean, it, it, this is this is a pedestrian answer, but the the peanut is my favorite, just because for me, I, I I'm, I'm making it more galaxy brain than I need to. But for me, it kind of symbolizes everything about SCP, is that it uh, it is on its surface something that seems so like bizarre and trivial and, and I, I hate to say that and it's just really to tee up the fact that there's actually something much more profound under it so I see the picture and it's like this dumb it, what I thought was a person I thought a person just like covered themselves in masking tape and then drew a face on it <laughs> and they're like hey let's take this creepy picture and I was like this is the silliest thing why does this have any heat behind it um, yeah. but you know it's that's just the first impression does not at all uh, represent what it is or even you know how culturally significant it is so i don't know my 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 initial exposure i think informs so much of that and that that's kind of what that particular scp means to me now yeah that's a pretty good answer for somebody who doesn't know anything about scp <laughs> <laughs> uh bruce do you have a favorite oh yeah um well i mean again like lawrence i'm not fully exposed to this world um, and I, I, yeah. I mean, today was the first time I've actually ever like sat down and played that game for more than an hour. The uh, uh, it was in breach, but um, from that one, I think it's it's got to be uh, the shy guys, the mm -hmm. oh yeah, the, the ones that are. I, there's just something, and and this this seems to be pretty common in, in most horror films. And actually, what I was noticing with SCP as well, which is things are way scarier when you're just reading a description. Because you don't you don't have anything to visualize it. You might have one picture on the SCP wiki or whatever, but even then, most of them you just got a description, and mm -hmm. that shit freaks out. That's that's the stuff that scares the fuck out of me because because then it's as as scary as you're visualizing it. Mm -hmm. And we um, as creators have huge brain imaginations, yep. so <laughs> it's just that much worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say that. Maybe Kraken does, but um, I will. I would say that. <laughs> okay, Kraken's got a big brain. Um, but but uh, but for me, yeah, that's that's just what scares me the most, and I think that's why shy guys scare me is because you don't see them, <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden you put the night vision goggles on, or something in the game prompts you, and then they're standing right in front of you. So that kind of stuff, just just right out of your vision, scares the shit out of me. Oh, I think oh, you're, you're talking about the invisible guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, oh yeah. So shy guy is the the kind of like hand name for the uh, the big lanky oh, one. That if oh, you look at yeah, him in the, the face. Guys. Wait, yeah. what are they, what is it? What? They're they're called sleep killers. Sleep okay, killers. Sleep stalkers. Uh, I I just I just linked it in in, in the chat there, Bruce. If you remember. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, that's oh again. I I know very little about these. Uh, oh no, I completely understand. I mean, to to be fair, they do look quite similar. They look pretty shy too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but either way, yeah. The, um, it's just that, just, just that you just can't. See. That's the, that's the worst. Yeah, that is, that is weird. If, if things that you can't see freak you out, there's, there's an SCP I think you, you might like that's actually in the game as well. Oh, okay. Um, it's called 3D Specs. It's called. Oh yeah, yeah. But, uh, what's the SCP number? It's one one seven eight. I just linked it there for you. Oh, I'll copy. Um, uh, I think just to wrap up the topic, I think my favorite would probably be. Uh, I recently um, uh, actually rediscovered Channel Vulgan because I've been I was looking up SCP videos while doing like menial tasks like you know shining oh, nice. like Pokemon hunting or like you know <laughs> whatever else um, and it was a perfect kind of you know mix of like super creepy pasta and you know innocent visuals um, but uh, the online friend one um, and was I think maybe my favorite one just by the connotation of it and of course yeah writing a creepypasta that takes place amongst internet communities uh, in an internet community, uh, I think is, yeah. is like super fun. But yeah, for sure. yeah, the whole concept of that one is like, there is a entity that masquerades as, you know, deceased people on in internet communities and stays there long enough to yeah. basically make friends. And then if you ever answer it with any personal details in it, like a DM, then it will, you become one of its like activated units and you die soon <laughs> so <laughs> it's basically final destination meets uh internet community and once my chat heard about that they all uh became <laughs> they became them so it's been great um but nice yeah nice that's a, a scp 1715 if anybody's interested yeah um are there any new scps that i guess have been written within the last year that have 
made to you know up your in your list or is it hard to kind of parse through them when there are so many now it's it, it's really difficult uh because recently the scp 5000 contest just mm -hmm. finished and a 5000 see the term uh thousand so scp 1000 2000 all the way to 5000 mm -hmm. are always decided by a contest mm -hmm. and they always have themes so in the last two years like whenever i started creating scp content there was there was only series one mm -hmm. and now there's six series so it, it, there's there's hundreds being written no no exaggeration and that's just the the main articles there's tales and all that kind of stuff being written mm -hmm. as well but i think the most one, one of the most recent ones that i read uh, was scp i think it was oh no not that one sorry. um yeah there, there, there was one that dj cactus uh wrote called scp 5004 megalomania and it's an scp based on donald trump <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah but, but that, that that that's the most polarizing one for obvious reasons but we'll not yeah. get into that um yeah so <laughs> Uh, SCP-5999, which is, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's called This Is Where I Died. Mm. Um, now, I was involved in creating the visuals for this yeah. one, so I was involved in it, but I still think the story is really good. If you want to check it out, check it out. Yeah. I'll link it here if anybody's curious. How many have you been involved in recently, aside from you know your your narration? Do you also get consulted by authors and uh, other folks in the oh, community no, no, often? No, I, no not, 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 for, not for authoring stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to give back to the community as much as possible because I, like I learned, I am still am learning, but I'm, I'm learning Blender mm -hmm. to make visuals for my videos Yeah, uh, because the visuals just don't exist. Um, but I try to get in contact with some authors to give them Creative Commons compliant art for mm -hmm. their articles as, as much as possible. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I mean, because before I became a YouTuber, I was a graphic designer. That's why I would have had no career unless I became a YouTuber. Um, <laughs> Fiverr so really sank it. I, huh? I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what like I, I have a skill set that's useful to a lot of people, including other SCP content creators. Like I, so I I, I just like to help out as as many people as I can because I can do it. Yeah, nice. that's that's very honorable. Good guy, Volgan okay. over here. <laughs> yeah, boy. I got a couple of chat questions that are pretty interesting. Oh, nice. Uh, Eric MLP wants to know how hard it was to make SCP-2521 into a video that fits its lore. 252, is that the archetype? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. I, I don't know what based on... Oh, oh yes. That, if, uh, for those of you who don't know, SCP-2521 is, is an SCP that is completely visual. Yeah. Because you, because you can't... You can't talk about it or write anything down about it because as soon as you mention it or write anything, it abducts you and kills you. So cool. you have, to, but it but it can't understand pictograms of any kind. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm looking you, at the page right yeah, now. Yeah, this is astounding. It's a bunch of diagrams. Yeah, it, it's one of the most creative entries that I've ever seen. But I we shouldn't talk about it, should we? Doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. So, how did you create a video about it then? Um, I created a video by writing like a fantasy tale about it and reading about a character called Tiberius, which is the SCP just in like a kind of, what would you call that, third person? Like I, I turned the SCP into a fantasy character, so I wasn't really referring to the SCP directly, just Got a it. kind of like a fan fiction character, like parallel to the SCP. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of reminds me of, um, was it Eric Walpaw, one of the ex-Valve guys who put out a short story with all the names swapped that was essentially the story of Half-Life Episode 3? Um, yeah, yeah I, rem I remember that. <laughs> Before I restarted making videos again, I tried to make a narration of that story. Oh, really? Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a really cool read. Uh, I remember yeah, I reading awesome. that and being like, oh, what's happening? Okay, cool. Oops. I know. Likewise. Uh, okay. So disappointing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, someday. Alex is coming, right? It might be all right. Yeah. As long as everyone in the world buys a Valve Index, they'll be in the money. 
Um, and I'm still waiting for mine. So. Uh, I got a few other probably quick questions here just to get them out of the way. Uh, Major Shazbot asks, what is your favorite version of 001? Oh, is, oh okay. So th th this is another teaching moment for those of you who aren't very f familiar with the SCP. So SCP-001 is obviously it's a number that people would want. You know, the first mm. SCP, right. whatever, whatever you want. So they... The, the authors agreed upon the, the, the 001 system as everyone gets to write their own version of SCP-001 mm -hmm. because even from a canonical standpoint it makes it more mysterious <laughs> nobody really nobody really knows what the first SCP want like uh there's there's one of them that's they're, they're, they're labeled by their author name so if you go to the beginning of series one and you click on 001 it says it presents you with kind of like a mysterious top secret by order of the administrator page and then you scroll down and you can see there's about 20 001 entries so i see what the, i think the most famous one at the would be the gate guardian i think it's called mm. but it, it's it's pretty much my favorite uh, I still haven't created a, a video on it because I still need to 3D model the character, but I'll link it in the chat there if you want. That's my fear. That's the answer to the question, by the way. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Like off on okay. a tangent there. Um, but... Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I, yeah. This uh, is, by the way, Bruce, this is uh, the shy guy, um, as he is nicknamed. Oh, this okay. That's probably my, my other favorite one, yeah. Probably Dr. My... Dr. Cliff's proposal, is that what we're, we're looking at? Uh, I, I was yeah, just putting on on the screen the uh, the shy guy, but yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 there he is. There's our guy. Yeah. Uh, last. That's, that's zero nine six. That's what the movie's based on. That should be coming out in the next few months. Yeah, he seems pretty that, cinematic. What, when he looks at you, he's gonna kill you. Is that? If, if you make, if you look at his face, then he will yeah, hunt you down to the ends of the earth until he kills you and eats yeah. you, pretty much. Um, there, there, there's an example within the document of zero nine six that. Um, Whenever you, obviously, whenever you look at his face, he comes and murders you or whatever. But yeah. somebody got killed because they looked at a picture. Oh. Of like a countryside, and two pixels of his face were visible. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> like, yeah. that's how finicky it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Last, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, just, this is the last, maybe, quick shot uh, chat question, but uh, Cyborg Pizza wants to know, what voice actors do you look up to? Uh, let's see. For some reason I'm blanking on his name. The guy that voices Spike Spiegel. What do you call him? Oh, Steve Bloom? St yep, St Steve Bloom, because he's been in pretty much everything. And David Hayter. <laughs> yeah. He voices Solid Snake. Man, I started playing Metal Gear Solid 4 again, and I don't understand how David did that. Like, right? Snake is already a really gravelly character, and then he made him sound even more old and busted, and it just, it almost hurts to listen to it. I don't know yeah. what he did. <laughs> I do know what, and also whenever you listen to his voice normally, it's nowhere. It's not just not deep at all. Yeah, it's fine. Oh man. Oh, okay. <laughs> characters. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean about that. I, like, that's why I admire him so much. Mm -hmm. Such a talented man. Are there any characters like that that you've uh, you've done either for your own videos or um, practiced for a reel or something that are incredibly different than your usual voice? Yeah, there's there's a character. Um, Called Max Lombardi, and he's kind of like a like a New Yorker type accent, like a really gravel, gravelly, gravelly voice. Hey, forget about it. Hey, you know forget about kind of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's that kind of. But he's an agent that uh, contains anomalies. It was like mm. a tale series that I did a long time ago. That was cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. I have Scott Joseph in my chat asking, uh, and, and I have no idea what this is. So if you're not the expert, it's okay. Aaron. Um, can you ask about the Ouroboros cycle? It's connected to zero zero one. <laughs> that seems like a, a Boy, very specific question. That's a baited I question. <laughs> yep. I know. Put, put it this way: there, there, there is a, there's an SCP content creator out there called the Exploring Series who has covered this video. Uh, or, he, has, he has covered the Ouroboros cycle. The video is three hours long. Mm. Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> and that's him trying to explain it. So, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. We might want to sidestep that one, but hey, if there's <laughs> content out there, if you guys want to read up on these things, and that's, I think, part of what this is all about is like we're trying to bring more attention and uh, just celebrate, I guess, weird little internet niches that have 
Yeah. Like it's just a well that just keeps going and, and yeah, it's definitely. bottomless really. Um, let's see. I, we got about, I think, 15 uh, more minutes, but um, I wanted to ask if there's any advice you would give uh, either aspiring voice actors or, uh, you know, creative writers that um, may be watching this and uh, want to know how to do the stuff that you do now. Well, um, I mean, I, I, I couldn't give advice to creative writers, really, because I, I don't have that skill set. But That's true. The, the, <laughs> like, the, like, the only, like the only advice I would give to people is just start start creating stuff really because that's that's what i did and it seemed to work not not that that's super insightful or anything just just stop thinking about creating stuff and just create mm -hmm. stuff no no but it's true you're absolutely right yeah. you are 100 yeah. percent right yeah i would yeah uh, yeah not that not that anyone asked but uh, i'll i'll tack on like start creating with the knowledge like accept that you won't be good at it for a very long time mm -hmm. like any skill it takes time to cultivate it and i think a lot of people the thing about performance and creativity is that it seems effortless when somebody's so good at it. Um, and then it's easy to think like that that should be approachable or attainable or that there's some baked in talent that those people have that you don't when you start doing something and you're just awful at it. Um, I think it's important to accept that, yeah, if you start doing anything, whether it's a hard skill or a soft skill like creativity, it takes time to cultivate. So give yourself permission to just be awful for a while and, uh, and just do it. Just do it for the fun of it. Yeah, I bet if you looked at it, all of our original videos, uh, you know, there, <laughs> there's many rough cuts before we get to kind of hitting our stride. Um, and even then, it evolves all the time, you know, like, I think, as you mentioned, like, you started off doing Tales series, and then that evolved into more kind of in-canon, scientifically notated lectures. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of examples for each of us and how we've had that same progression of our own. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, cool. Um, I mean, yeah, we can we can wrap this up uh, whenever you guys feel like. I mean, we play SCP stuff all the time um, on this channel. So next time that we do a multiplayer thing, we can. Uh, if you would like, Volgan, you're you're more than invited yes. to uh, yes. to yes. come in and and I, didn't you say at some point you had joined uh, an online lobby and started voicing your character to just strangers? How how did yeah. that go? Yeah. I, so. Because I voiced Zero Four Nine, I thought it would be cool to join a mm -hmm. Gmod role playing server oh boy. as as the, the character. It's a great idea. Oh my gosh! Um, the, 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 the reactions were were quite explosive at the start. Um, <laughs> I couldn't really use it because there was a lot of uh, let's just say colorful language used. Uh -huh. uh, but after after a while, people didn't believe. That it was really me, <laughs> um, so it just kind of became like a mute point after a while. They thought yeah. it was a joke. It sounds like you yeah. were. Uh, yeah, they, they just thought it was somebody who was really yeah. good at your voice. Yeah, it was like quit using a voice changer. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Internet mythos. Like once you build, because SCP people want to believe in it, but they can't. And then yeah. you have someone come in from the SCP world, and they're like, "Oh, I want to believe you, but." I can't because everything else is fake. Why would you be real? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's so fascinating to me. The, like the whole point of SCP is it is approachable. Like it's it's mm -hmm. supported by everybody, maintained by everybody. So what's so hard to believe about one of those members being a part of that community and playing those games? But I don't know. People almost want to believe that there's almost like this Mount Olympus of uh, mm -hmm. of people who have God ideas, and then everyone else is just down there yeah, just shouting like at each other in Discord. Like the Creative writers can't be people like us. They're not, <laughs> you know, they have to be an, an actual council of people that, you know, that decide these things. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'd be curious to know how much communication some of the more prolific writers have with each other versus those that just, you know, submit an article and never meet anyone else in the community and just, you know, move on. Um, what, actually, I, I'm, that's more of, I guess, a question for Vulcan, but do you have like a, is there any insight you can give us into the actual kind of persistent SCP community and, you know, people that live and breathe in this place? Is it like a forum where all this communication happens or uh, is it all kind of just done through the articles? Um, it's it's every, everywhere. Like, I mean, there's there's the, the SCP Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. There's SCP Declassified as well. That's also a Reddit. But there's a lot of discussion happens on IRC, believe it or not. Mm. I, God knows why. <laughs> Um, I tried to use it once. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Um, there's, there's a lot of 
there's a lot of discord communities it's so, it's so scattered i don't think there's any one solitary kind of hub yeah where, where, where it all happens i mean obviously the scp wiki is, is is the home of all the content but i don't think it's it, it's the home of where all the discussion happens because mm -hmm. that because that's the good thing about uh, like this this whole community is anyone can contribute if yeah you know like maybe, maybe not officially like for example i'm never going to be able to have the skill set to write an article or anything but there are ways that i can contribute as everyone can sure everybody has something to offer yeah i think the, the blender example you gave is great like you know you can you can choose the ones that you think you can add something to and and collaborate yeah. with them even if it's not in you know actually writing yeah, I, have kind of a, I have kind of a question along those lines and you don't have to reveal anything both mm -hmm. but um is there anybody that you have seen submit stories or that you've heard of submit stories to the, to the group um that are actual you know professional writers uh whether or not they're mm -hmm. novelists or write screenplays or television have you have you ever heard of that before yeah uh, have you heard of max landis of course mm -hmm. of um yeah he's actually written an scp that's that's the most famous example i can think of mm -hmm. uh let's see what's it called it's the it's like a haunted two-pack album i think hold on. a haunted yeah, sure. two-pack yeah why not yeah, it, <laughs> hold on hold on uh scp 2137 yeah the huh. forensic ghost of tupac shakur it's called <laughs> oh my god okay. yeah, hold on. but that that's the most famous example i can i can think of yeah max yeah. landis it's uh it's, it's kind of speaks to just our previous uh conversation about this just a few minutes ago which was i i don't necessarily think that you know people everybody everybody's like you so people that are writing screenplays or people that are writing television or you know the, the stuff that uh millions or billions of people consume um they are just like the people that are writing SC. and mm -hmm. uh you know some are better some are worse obviously as is always the case but i i think that that's something that i really love about this this whole scp community is that it can be people that are just coming up and they're just sort of like hey you know what mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna write this story and I'm sure that they've gone on to have, you know, big careers in writing or in, um, in some other sort of uh, creative content producing. Yeah, and definitely. I, I just, I, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's what's the coolest about this is that they're all, they're all just people like you and me. So just, just give it a shot. Like you said earlier, just, just yeah. start creating. And it is also early days. I mean, if you think of when SC first started coming around, you know, I think a lot of the people that have gotten in either written their own stories or, you know, found it later, like, they're still fairly young and like, you know, now is kind of the time when I think we're going to get to a place where more traditional media is going to look to the internet for inspiration a lot more. Um, when, you know, before it's like, you know, the 50th reboot of Aladdin and now we're like, you know, you might find, oh, actually this katana wielding guy in SCP would make a much better Aladdin story. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, that's I, able, by the way, for, for the, yeah. Know. Oh yeah. That's the one that like, is he the one like in the cat like the uh, the casket that they have to chain up and he breaks out every once in yeah. a while and kills everybody? Yeah. N known by the community as Edgy Anime Man. Yeah. Edgy Anime Man. Well, they got him right in the team up bottle. <laughs> um, hey, he looks like my uh, my Discord avatar. It's <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, you. That right. uh, is just me. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm excited to see. Uh, I think this is only the beginning of where internet's going to bleed into everyone else's lives. Um, okay. Although. Oh yeah, that brings up another point though of losing that kind of niche community charm that I think a lot of people love about things like SCP. Once yeah. we start getting movies like Cabin in the Woods or you know their own like spin-offs that are clearly inspired by but go in different directions, and you know yeah, yeah. chat says the normies. Once the normies get in, are we gonna <laughs> lose? Are we gonna lose what's special? <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Because I, I have my own thoughts, so I want you guys to go first. I, I think that the, the uh, unrestrained creativity will probably get, will probably be restrained. That, that tends to be a common thing. Is that once something becomes bankable and marketable, then the like the pain points get screened out of it. So right now, SCP is everything. Um, you know, it, the the limits really are your imagination. Down to the point where there is no canon, like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so. But if it ever becomes a bankable thing, then I think yeah. 
there will always be people who, I mean, kind of like me, will drag their knuckles up to it and be like, I don't get it. And as soon as somebody has that reaction, then there's going to be an executive that's like, well, we got to change this so everyone gets it so we can make as much money as possible. Um, yeah. It it would be tough for me to see a vert that there wouldn't be some version or that spirit living somewhere. But I do think that, I don't know, weird things happen once it becomes commodified. I think, you know, Control was an excellent example of an adaptation still being very true to its subject matter and also just a genuinely amazing game. But mm -hmm. once it starts appearing more and more and becomes safer and safer, and then I think the first time that some, like Volgan, if you if you were ever talking with somebody at the supermarket and they say, oh, I'm involved with SCP, and then somebody else is like, oh, I know that from this movie, and then you just stare at them because it's like the worst possible version of it. I think that's the exact moment <laughs> that, uh, that the dream will be dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or that you'll have to start sub segregating of being like okay all the fans of this version of scp you go over there and we'll stay here doing our thing um yeah. that's just kind of where the narrative tends to go yeah I, it, it's already happened to be honest. oh really oh okay yeah there's there's subs i mean there's there's offshoots of the scp wiki like the wanderers library is one of them uh the, the rpc authority is is, the, is another one you know, so it's 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 already happened. Okay. But, right. but I mean, yeah, it, 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 that's definitely a good point because you didn't even know it had already happened when you made the point. Uh -huh. so. uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess every every community always, if it goes on long enough, will always eventually splinter off. But I, I guess what I would what I would imagine is that it's almost like when a band breaks, and then there are people who insist that they were fans before it got popular, and then they reject like the new, more popular fans of whatever i feel personally attacked by that lord <laughs> what what do you mean <laughs> because he was ahead of it he he found no, scp we... before all of us did oh well yeah. sure yeah so we're we're the we're, SCP. we're the hangers on no i i just mean more like um not not that you're that person but i think that phenomenon will exist where people feel you know strong ownership to the core of what it is and the culture of what it is and then when more people get to know about it and that culture shifts then people will sort of, you know, self-divide into the true believers and the people who came later. Yeah, yeah, the, the gatekeepers. <laughs> yeah, gatekeepers. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what that is. I like yeah. that you're talking about the uh, the true spirit of SCP as we're watching this yeah. video <laughs> of this <laughs> fucking by the, it looks by like. By the way, if that, anybody doesn't know, that's SCP-999. Yes, thank you. you. Go ahead. Oh, it's SCP what? 999. Mm. Oh, okay, all right. He, all right. Is, he is... The the most wholesome SCP in the entire uh, the lore. Oh, it, his yep. entire purpose is to bring joy to people. He's Aww. he's the tickle monster, and he like does not harm anyone. Even the the most like you know foul SCP in the facility like yep. loves him and would laugh when playing with him. So oh, that's so nice. Yep. And the and the only thing SCP nine 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 eats are M and M's and Necco wafers. <laughs> Ooh, I like both of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a little sugary ball of goop. The Google oh, yeah. image search results for this SCP are delightful. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's like it's like everyone bottled up all of their oh. like their all the pain they feel through all the SCP entries and 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 he is the exact opposite of that. Like he's he's the <laughs> distilled counter reaction to every single entry. Yeah, that, really I, I, I I just linked the. the oh, did you make the blender? The thumbnail, I was yeah. gonna ask. Yes. Oh, yes, that was, oh, that's that awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna. Where is this? It's so good. He's thing? such a shiny little boy. I love that they call him the just the tickle monster. It's so it's yeah. so clear. Exactly what he is. <laughs> um, Zero asked a good question in my chat, it's, and this is actually a really good question, especially for people like me. Uh, what's the easiest way that you get people into SCP? Is it like I know you talked about likening it to the X Files, but if you were mm -hmm. to if you were to give somebody you know a really quick paragraph on it and try to get them into it, how would you do it, Bolton? If I was trying to get somebody interested in SCP, like I I think the the SCP Foundation exploded whenever the likes of PewDiePie and Markiplier started mm -hmm. playing SCP Containment Breach. I think right that's up. what 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 uh, got people interested to maybe dive deeper into the lore mm -hmm. you know so like so like the video game is kind of like the surface and then if you want to go deeper into it the scp wiki exists so i honestly my answer would be um get them to play containment breach or containment breach unity honestly yep, yep. or, or sh show them an example like that uh people yeah. are also saying in my chat your channel volgan which is what <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it's just called the Volgan. YouTube.com forward slash the the Volgan. I think that's V O L G U N, right? Yep. Yeah, there we go. I'm sure, we got that call out because uh, you've been running that channel for years. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, it it years at this point, I think. <sighs> eight, eight years. Wow, nice. good for you. Good for you. Um, people are saying. Uh, someone's in my chat said they got their mom into SCP through the IKEA SCP, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. which is a fantastic one, by the way. If you guys haven't yes. looked that one up, I don't know the number offhand, but it's uh, three zero zero eight. Three zero zero eight. Yeah, that one is chilling. It, it's like it's weirdly haunting, but also hilarious in that it's a inter. It's like a transdimensional IKEA that goes on forever, um, yep. but it's also populated by uh, these like these employees that are just like mockeries of human forms that are become mm -hmm. hostile at night when it's closed <laughs> and so their entire human civilizations that have gotten lost in here from different dimensions that have mm -hmm. built their own you know society which is all built out of ikea i, I love the official equipment. name for that scp is it's scp 3008 uh perfectly normal regular old ikea or yeah. something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah that's exactly right <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a really good one. If if anybody's interested in uh, seeing that SCP in an animated context, mm -hmm. there's a there's a YouTube channel out there called Lord Bung, who actually creates an SCP animated series that's fantastic. Mm. I, I that's that's the piece of SCP media I always link to people here unfamiliar. Mm. Um, so uh, the series is called Confinement. If, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple of those. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I'll be sure to check that Any out. Time as... for any uh any other i mean i imagine there's so many people to to thank and shout out in the scp community it must be hard to 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 pick yeah. and choose but um yeah, it it's such a, a vibrant place so if anyone's interested in getting involved i guess best advice just be to dive in and pick a, a corner and if there's anything you think you can add to it then you know chances are you'll be welcomed yeah definitely definitely is there any yeah, anything you would everyone. caution against for people that you know like words of warning you know things not to do uh, things not to do um i th don't don't cold post which means just don't write something and upload it to the scp foundation mm -hmm. uh, because it'll be instantly deleted but other, other than that i mean i think if you just like I, I think the most accessible way um to start getting involved in the scp community is to uh so just search scp on youtube there's a number of scp content creators um they all have discords chat on the discord with with people there's usually authors in those discords that'll give mm -hmm. you advice yeah um, if you're nice to them don't don't just demand stuff of them but yeah <laughs> great pretty pr pretty much just join some discords start start chatting find out how you could uh, collaborate with people or that kind of stuff because that's what it's all about that's what the scp community is all about it's collaboration mm -hmm. sorry i just spawned as scp 999 which is Beautiful. Oh, no, look, I, they're, all, they're all helping you. They're all they're all hugging me. They're taking. Yeah, they, want, they want to take a tickle. They want a little tickle. <laughs> they just want you to see their IDs. They're showing off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for audio listeners, I don't know how to describe this, but pure joy. We're seeing. <laughs> this is a moment of joy in all the D classes live where they're lost <laughs> to terrible terrors at this facility yeah, for, forget baby yoda this is scp yeah <laughs> scp 99 was the original baby yoda <laughs> i want some plushies of that this can be yeah. play-doh heated up play-doh <laughs> <laughs> um great well i think that's that's kind of the show um any uh oh any other comments from from chat want to read or we can uh let you go back to your Worlds, uh, Fulgen. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get sign off yet. It's new. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I have another question from from Eric LLP. He's, sure. We have a, we have three or four like really really super intense people, which is great um, mm -hmm. about SCP. And it's it's funny because I don't want to assault you too with too many questions because I know you're not like the keeper of all things SCP. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But hopefully you can answer them. Um, sure. So uh, what would what they would use or rather attempt to use SCP-662 for if they had him available? So what is SCP-662? I'm not too good with all them. 662. I, I, I mean, like, I don't know how you you knew all of them to begin yeah. with. Yeah, it's, it's difficult for anyone that's, I think, a oh an influence within uh, the SCP community because they 
they look to for answers, but the whole point is there are no answers. There you know? are no answers, yeah. 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 Okay, so SCP-662 is the butler's handbell. So basically what it is, is if you ring the bell, uh, a butler appears called Mr. Deeds, and you can tell him to do something. For example, go and get me a glass of iced tea and he'll bring it back to you. But it can be as disturbing as go kill somebody and he'll oh, go and okay. do it for you. Okay, So that's probably what he means. Um, I don't know. I probably, I probably ask for like an editor to edit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's perfect there, for a content well, creator. Well, ask and you shall receive. Who wants a job in chat? Because <laughs> <laughs> you can um, help the Vulgan. <laughs> actually, that that proves a, a follow-up question. Do you do this all on your own? Do you run your, your channel by yourself? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, Have it, you it, it's... considered getting an editor? I, I know it's a tough thing. I mean, and I know yeah. it's not as easy as that, right? Like, so many creators I know would love to have an editor but have no way of feeling comfortable relinquishing some creative control in a way that they feel the quality will stay the same so yeah, you pretty much summed it up yeah I, I mean i like towards the end of last year i was suffering from severe creator burnout yeah uh, because i just have to constantly be recorded and editing constantly uh so i did look into getting an editor but i just have no idea about the creative control thing what you're saying is, is bang on i just don't know how to approach it at all so if anybody has any advice as to how to look mm. for an editor or any of that. Uh, I, my, my only advice for you, because I've been doing this uh, off and on now for about six months, is, mm -hmm. uh, and actually with Funhouse for years, um, yep. I uh, just let somebody try it once. That's it. Okay. And then if you like it, uh, you like it. And then if you don't, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Then you know you, you right. can kind of, you can move on and be like, oh, that wasn't exactly the creative vision that I had. And that's not a big, that's not a, problem or a mm -hmm. bad thing yeah because a, lot, a lot of people have just different creative visions just try it out my two cents would be pick a specific part of your workflow that you're comfortable uh you know having some other input in and then it doesn't have to be the whole thing but you know maybe they do the animated scrolling and background you know graphics on the video or just one of those and then you do the other piece of it and that way you know if you have to redo it then it's not the end of the world but it's also potentially you know work off you yeah, yeah. sure i appreciate that um, i will bear that in mind for sure because i definitely do need to, to hand control over over to somebody else at some some point yeah. we all know that very well mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we do yeah, you definitely do cool yeah Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mr. Volgan. Uh, once again, you can find his channel at the Volgan on YouTube.com. Uh, do you do any streaming? Um, I'm hoping to get into streaming. Uh, I every so often on YouTube, I, I would stream just to just to chat with people. Yeah. But I, I do have a Twitch, but there's no point in I guess in promoting it because I don't really use it that much. But on YouTube, I do. Well. Okay. Uh, it's never never too late to start and you're certainly <laughs> welcome to to join with us anytime it's it's a uh, i i'd be curious to, to see what part of your workflow you would be interested in streaming i mean i i'm a big advocate for like finding ways of bringing your work to live community aspect you know there's there's one thing that i want to actually thank you for the here be dragons video somebody clipped a part of it that you were oh watching. yeah yeah. Can I just say thank you so much for appreciating the ending of that video? <laughs> oh, I loved it. I I was I that's actually what actually inspired me to reach out to to bring you on this this little podcast was <laughs> I if anyone has seen that uh that video there's an SCP where only a small fraction of the actual entry is about SCPs the foundation's containment of this SCP. The rest is basically a a what if. <laughs> it's like it yeah. is wow we screwed up here is all the things we missed because we are dumb science <laughs> foundation um yeah. and uh at the very end uh volgan had a little bit of his own spin on it that he put that uh gave it a happy ending that um my chat was like crying yeah, over I, so. I, I really i really appreciate it because like you know the way you can see the analytics for audience retention yeah oh. That that ending never gets seen. <laughs> so no! I, I really appreciate oh. that. No! Oh, that's heartbreaking. All right, everyone, go back, watch the video. Only watch the ending. Skip to the end. <laughs> Artificially inflate the results. Um, cool. Well, uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, maybe we can uh, we'll do it again sometime, and we'll find uh, 
some other yeah, little, no, little I'll, honestly thank you so much for having me it was a brilliant experience um it's great to have actually met all you guys oh, oh yeah really good to meet you too yeah, yeah. fantastic just a you and I, I love the uh you just you're obviously a, a talent and you have been for years and you're doing it on your own which is amazing so um the more we can shout out the, your youtube channel and uh, your talent the better sure mr oh, thanks, man. yeah of course thanks great much well appreciated. thanks again uh this is, we don't have a sign out really. Does anyone have like a, a fun <laughs> sign out thing they want to say? Hey, thanks for listening to the Talk to the Internet podcast. Remember to drink G Fuel and buy your Casper mattresses. And we'll see you next week. I don't know. That kind of fizzled out for me Actually, too. Best we can hope for. It's on. It's on. Uh, it's on iTunes. So if you want to listen to it on iTunes, oh yeah, or whatever. Uh, yeah. The link. The link will be in the description of the YouTube video. So mm -hmm. click that and uh, download it every week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're hitting the uh, audio only world now. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, that's uh, one last question for Wogan. Uh, have you released your videos on audio listening sites? And uh, if not, then why not? <laughs> I, I I have I haven't found a way to do it without still like monetizing them. I know that sounds uh -huh. really greedy, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's true though. You, I mean, like you, you know business, I, I, you're, I just you're, need you're to running find a business. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just need yeah. to find at least one sponsor uh, that yeah. will. We'll do it. But I, I have it set up on Anchor, um, but it's there's only one episode up, and it was released last April. So yeah, everybody oh, is always yeah, anniversary is coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you want us to appear on uh, on your your own, you know, we'll uh, we'll trade we'll trade guest appearances. So no, um, they would delight me more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys. Um, thank you, Volgan, for being a great guest, and see you all next week. Yeah. See you later. Uh, Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bang. Okay. Oh, thank God. It's not something bad. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. Pink Dasani water came in at the end. I was going to stream some Witcher, but man, I am uh, I'm pretty wiped. My, my legs actually kind of are sore from sitting for so long. So I'm going to call it there for today. Um, I got to cook dinner too. Hang out with Steph. Yeah, where's my energy drink? God. Yeah, sorry. Didn't didn't hit the bits this week. Um, but that's okay. It was kind of a special episode. But thank you for thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, that was fun. That was really cool. Yeah, Craig can kind of put that together, and I think it was, turned out super super well. This stuff's all really cool. So, um, thank you guys for watching. I think I'm gonna and I'm hang the hang the stream up. I think Stephanie just got home too because I heard the trash cans get brought brought back inside. So, actually, that means they were out. For day which is kind of weird anyway i'm gonna go cook dinner so you guys have a great day i'll be back at it tomorrow or which are three oh wait no tomorrow wait a minute what did i put down pit droids yeah the next in the uh star wars prequel thon is tomorrow pit droids the best star wars game ever remember those pit droids boy they're, they're wacky huh pit droids so gonna gonna play that um i don't know how long that game is i guess we'll find out but and I guess we all find out too. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. Bye.